Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Are we called to judge one another? And the answer to that question is, no, we are not. Now, some time ago, earlier in our study of this same book, the book of Romans, in chapter 2, I made that same statement. And I received much correspondence from people who disagreed. And they disagreed based upon two scriptures. The first is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, where it says there, we will judge the angels. And their rationale was this. If we're going to judge the angels, certainly we're called to judge one another. But here's the problem. Based upon the context of Romans 2, we were speaking about judging one another in this age, in this body, from our perspective that we have now, which is limited. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, when it says, and we will judge the angels, it's not now in this world, in this body, but it will be in the kingdom of God. When we have a new body, a kingdom body, when we will know things in a much better way, that we will know ourselves as we truly are. So yes, at that time, we are going to judge the angels. But judging is not for now. Well, again, people, based upon 1 Corinthians chapter 2, said this, Does not the Scripture command us that we should judge all things? Yes, but that is for our behavior, evaluating things, knowing what is right and wrong for our behavior, what we do and what we do not do. It is not for the purpose of condemning one another. See, we need to pay attention to the biblical words. When I said we are not called to judge one another, if you look there, the word that appears also includes the word katakrino, not just krino, but katakrino, which means to judge down where we would get the English concept to condemn. So when I said we're not called to judge one another, the context was that we were not called to be condemning of one another, and that is a fact, that is biblically sound, and I stand by that. But we are called, and the word krino, can mean to judge, but also can mean to evaluate, meaning to arrive at a decision, a judgment. Let me give you an example. In the recent Supreme Court decision concerning abortion, of course we're called to have an opinion. We're called to make judgment and the appropriate judgment, regardless of what the Supreme Court says. We look at things based upon the revelation of God's word, and every believer could, could arrive at the conclusion that abortion is wrong, it is murder. We should not, because the mother or the father doesn't want that child, we shouldn't kill that child. We shouldn't, shouldn't put that child to death because of how that child was conceived. These things are wrong. Therefore, abortion is wrong. We can render judgment on that, and we must. But what I was speaking about was something very different, and that is that we should not have that condemning spirit in regard to others, those who are fellow believers and those who are outside the body of believers because our desire is that they might receive the truth and be welcome into the kingdom of God. Well, with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Romans and chapter 14. The book of Romans and chapter 14. Now, there are two issues that Paul is going to deal with, and these are not issues that you may think that they are. 
In regard to the first one, we're dealing with food. And some interpret this in regard to the dietary laws of the Old Testament, what the world calls kosher, more appropriately, the term kashrut. We're not dealing with the kosher laws here. No, the context is very clear. We're dealing with an entirely different issue, and that is, is it permissible to eat meat? Or, now based upon our faith, is meat forbidden? And we're going to see that Paul deals with that issue, not cash root, not the dietary laws of the Bible. Secondly, it's going to be dealing with days, whether we observe certain days, and the context is not Shabbat, the Sabbath, or the festivals, but rather we know in that culture that there were certain days, for example, still within Judaism, based upon the writings outside the Bible, and some even biblical passages, there are days and dates given where people discern if it's biblical it's an accurate date some are extra biblical and it's tradition that this event happened and therefore because of these views they celebrate observe certain days differently put more in emphasis is this permissible should we argue and judge and condemn one another over these things well let's see what the word of god clearly reveals romans chapter 14 and verse 1 but the one being weak with faith and that's literally what it says but the one being weak with faith what are we commanded paul says you receive so those who are weak of faith we are called to receive them and he goes on to say again in verse one and not to judge disputable things that is arguments we're not called to argue and dispute these dis disputable things based upon a desire to put one out of the fellowship to reject him to condemn him now we can deal with these things and we should but not for the purpose of condemning one another and and banishing one from the local congregation notice what he says in verse 2 now the construction in the greek language deals with two related situations it says here and we can translate it on one hand on one hand one believes to eat all things and when it says all things what it means here is meat everyone agreed there was no dispute that fruits and vegetables are acceptable now the question is meat and i would argue that the context would be meat that is permissible based upon the word of god so it says here on one hand there's one who believes to eat all things but the one being weak very important the one being weak vegetable he eats and the implication is only vegetables and that would include fruits as well so again we need to understand the context the dispute the argument is this there is one being weak in faith that says this one should only eat fruits and vegetables the one who is not weak that means stronger in the faith he believes that it is also acceptable now at this age to eat meat. And Paul would agree with this view that it is permissible. But notice what he says. Look on now to verse 3. The one who eats. So the one who eats meat, he says, the one that does not eat, let him not, and it's in the form of a command, let him not despise very important there's a dispute there is an argument both group are basing their view upon scripture but one's interpretation based upon paul is not correct they have a biblical rationale but it's not the conclusion that is correct 
But nevertheless, Paul says, receive this one and do not despise him. Keep reading the second part of verse 3. And the one who does not eat, the one eating, let him not judge, meaning let him not condemn this one. Why? For God, him, he has received. Now, the, the emphasis is that God has received this one who eats all things, meaning who eats meat. And the conclusion for us is this. God has received both of these because in this context, both of them have believed the gospel. Both of them are in the faith. One happens to be weaker than the other. But, but God has received both of them. Now look at the next verse, verse 4. Very important foundational truth. He says, Who are you, the one who is judging another's servant? Now, the fact of the matter is this. Both of them are servants of who? Servants of Messiah, of Jesus Christ. And therefore, it is not appropriate for a servant to judge a fellow servant. The judgment belongs to the Lord. Therefore, look again at verse 4. Who are you, the one who is judging another one's servant? To his own Lord, we could translate that master, but it is the word that's normally translated Lord. To his own Lord, he stands or falls. So it's up to the Lord to render this judgment, not us. And this just supports what I said earlier in our study of Romans chapter 2. To his own Lord, he stands or falls, and he will be made to stand. Why? Because God is able to stand him. So God is going to cause this one who is weak, but nevertheless in faith, Weak in faith, but has faith, God is going to uphold him. Meaning this, God is going to establish him. And God, and I can speak from a personal standpoint, I'm sure in the past that I have been wrong and was weak in the faith, but God grows me. And I can say today, being stronger in the faith, there's still things that I need to learn, a lot of them. And therefore, God is still working. Praise him that that good work that he's began in you and me, he's going to complete, but it has not been completed now. We're still growing and maturing. In other words, you and I are both learning. And it is healthy to rightly understand this truth. There's a lot more that you and I need to learn. But God is going to make us to stand. Verse 5. On one hand, the one judges a day beyond a day. Now we're in another issue. He's completed this issue of whether it's permissible to eat meat. Now he's dealing with the second one, days. So on one hand, and it's the same situation, on one hand, look at verse 5. There is one who judges, who discerns, who has made a decision that one day is, is beyond another day. What does that mean? That he observes a day differently than another day. And again, the context is this. There are dates. Let's just deal with Judaism. There are dates that you can look on a, a calendar that is based upon Judaism where there's a whole bunch of things written on the calendar that this happened then and that happened on this date. This is based upon either a biblical reference or a traditional reference that comes from the sages, come from extra biblical writings. And the question is, is it permissible to, to acknowledge these things and treat this day differently than, than a typical day? Well, what's the verdict according to God? Look again at verse 5. On one hand, there is one who judges, and we could say observes, 
a day beyond another day. And who judges every day, meaning every day to be the same? What does the scripture say? Each one in his own mind being, and we could translate this, being fully convinced. Now, this is a matter what we would call today a matter of conscience. If I am led based upon my own conscience, that, that this day is different. This happened based upon the scripture. Therefore, I want to treat it in a special way. And someone else says, well, I treat every day the same. And again, just like we weren't dealing with cash root, we're not dealing here necessarily with Shabbat and the biblical festivals, those appointed days that belong to the Lord. We're dealing with tradition. These views concerning was it permissible to eat meat and is it appropriate to set certain days differently, observe them differently than, than some days. And we have here, look again, it says in the, the sixth verse, the one who thinks, and that's literally the word, but in this context, we could understand it. The one who observes. So look again, verse six. The one who observes the day. To the Lord, he observes. And the one who does not observe the day, once again, to the Lord, he does not observe it. The one who eats, to the Lord he eats, for he gives thanks to God. And the one who does not eat, to the Lord, he does not eat, also he gives thanks to God. So in both situations, whether we're talking about eating meat or not eating meat, both of them do this, make the decision because of their commitment to God their faith in God, and likewise, in regard to these days, those who see on this day a special significance, they, they observe it in a unique way because they want to honor God. They give thanks to God. So both of these groups, they're doing in the end the same thing. It is because of their faith, whether it be strong or weak, but because of faith, they behave a certain way. And in the end, what is their objective? Something's good. They are giving thanks to God. Therefore, we want to uphold that. That is the appropriate thing to do, to give thanks to God. So even though there's a dispute, don't let such disputes cause division in the body of believers. Now, notice what else he says. Look now to verse 7. Now, I underlined this and highlighted it because it's foundational. Verse 7. For none of us to himself lives. This is the foundational principle. We do not live unto ourselves. What does that mean? Two things. First, we live unto the Lord. And secondly, because we are committed to the Lord, we are also concerned about who? Other individuals. God was so concerned, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved them, he had a concern for them, so should we. And do not let these disputable things cause division and bring about condemnation towards someone that God loves and God has provided for. So again, verse seven. For no one of us to himself he should live, and no one to himself should die. Meaning, whether we live or we die, everything is given to who? Offered up to God. We are called to live sacrificially our life, and whether we die, we die for our faith, and we live based upon our faith. That's what he's saying here a very foundational truth. Look now to, to verse 8. If for, if also we live to the Lord, we live. If also we die to the Lord, we die. So true. This is the objective of one who is of faith. 
whether we live or die, everything that we are, everything that we have, everything is to the Lord. We want to give thanks to him because he has saved us. He has given us his only begotten son dead on the cross in order that we might have eternal life. And now we know something else about this one. We'll come to that in a moment. But look again in the middle of verse 8 where it says, Therefore, if also we live, if also we die, here's the key, of the Lord's we are. We belong to the Lord, dead or alive. And this speaks about this this eternal hope that we have. Verse 9. For to this. Now that is an odd expression, but that's literally what it says in the biblical language. For to this. And what does that mean? It's speaking here about a primary thought. Many times, especially in the Old Testament, When we have this word, this, that stands by itself, it means this being the primary thing. And this is what Paul is coming down to. Paul thought in a Hebraic manner. Verse verse 9, For to this Messiah also died, also rose, and also lived. So he died He was resurrected, and he lives for us. Everything that he did was for the betterment, the salvation of humanity. He did things based upon our well-being from the, the standards of God and the will of God. And therefore, he says, keep reading in verse 9, in order that also the dead and the live he should lord over, meaning rule. Now, that's the key. The mindset that we should have is this, that he is Lord and that he rules over us, meaning every decision is not a personal one, but based upon what would be pleasing and correct to him. And again, the Lord is the Lord of all things, including our conscience. So we should be always in subjection to him. That's what he says in this verse. Look again. Verse 9, for to this Messiah also died and rose and he lived in order that also the dead and the living he should lord over. Verse 10, but, but, but you, why do you judge your brother? Very important. He's our brother, a fellow believer. So why do you judge your brother or also you why do you despise your brother now what he's telling us here in this scripture is this when we have that judgmental when we have that condemning attitude what is it really about well it is about the fact that we despise and that's not where we should be that's not the position of faith what's the position of faith we should love our neighbor as ourselves. We don't want to be despised. We don't want people to have contempt for us. Now, because of our love for God, we make biblical decisions. And if those individuals that disagree with God, despise us, have contempt, want to judge us, condemn us, that's their business. But, but we don't have malice against them. He also says, keep reading, Look at the second part of verse 11. For all must appear, meaning all are going to stand before the judgment seat of Messiah. Why is that verse there? That verse is so important because it tells us ultimately. In these disputed things, these matters of conscience, in the end, it's not for me or for you to judge, to condemn, to despise someone. Why? Because every believer is going to be brought before the judgment seat, the Bema seat of Messiah. And this is for the purpose of rewards. Messiah is going to to make a, a declaration, a judgment, whether such views and such behaviors were appropriate or not. 
And those things that I do that are inappropriate, I'm going to suffer a loss of rewards. And those things that I do which is appropriate, I'm going to be blessed. There's going to be rewards for that. But who determines that? Not you, not me. It is God. It is Messiah. So there is a day of accounting. We'll see that in a moment. A day of rendering judgment. But who does that? Just like I said earlier, it is the judgment seat that belongs to Messiah. Verse 11. For it has been written, Lives I, says the Lord, the Lord is alive. He's going to judge. And it tells us here, because he's alive, that to me shall, shall bow every knee and every tongue will confess to God. So everyone is going to have to make a confession. They're going to state, not to one another, but to God. Now, what's so great about this is this. Who's the judge? Messiah, we've been taught. The Word of God says all matters of judgment have been given to Messiah, but it says here, every knee is going to bow, every tongue confess to who? To God. And why is that important? Because it speaks about the divinity of Messiah. Last verse, verse 12. Therefore, each of us concerning himself, very important. Therefore, as a result of this, each one of us, every believer, concerning himself, an account he will give to God. Very important. Every one of us is going to have to give an account of what we thought, what we said, and what we did. Everyone is going to be judged. The good news is this. Based upon the gospel, that judgment doesn't determine where I'm going to spend eternity. When you receive the gospel, confessing your sins and trusting in that death, burial, and resurrection of Messiah, you will experience forgiveness. You will suffer a loss of rewards, but you will be eternally in the kingdom of God. But we should want to earn many rewards and be great in the kingdom of God as Yeshua taught in Matthew 5. Why? Because with these rewards, we, we receive crowns which we give to Messiah. And these crowns represent what Messiah did, what he meant to us in this age. And we should want to demonstrate a great love and commitment for him. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.